wants to volunteer uh, discussing the overall approach of this person. Assumption, for example, what he has put. We are discussing right now 0A1. existing known ideas trying to build a bigger semantic idea. So he cites multiple like the what is it? Inverse domain frequency, docket frequency, TFID models. So clearly the author has a very good foundation of how semantic web should interact, how the ideas should work. And they're trying to leverage that against like how they would use those existing ideas to build their own semantic web engine. Right, but uh, TFID is an adjunct, is an adjunct aspect of uh, semantic uh, approach, right? It's not what aspect? TFIDF is adjunct. It's not the primary, you know, it's, it's, that is an information retrieval. Yeah, so he's using, like, leveraging, like, information retrieval to start building, like, something about leveraging those ideas. Okay. To try and, like, basically taking a toolkit and using those tools to assemble their own semantic web. So instead of trying to design from the ground up, he's using, like, existing tools to try and take some of the work out, the hard work out of it and use tools, existing tools to build on top of that. Which is a very good concept in, like, a design kind of okay. research background. Search engine. Uh, we took a document and we classified. Oh, this is a baseball document. And then we used baseball domain-specific ontology too. Now I don't know whether this person. You know, we'll discuss whether this person actually used that idea or not. But at the start, at least, that seems to be an intent that is expressed. Expressed here. Okay. All right. Anybody wants to talk about the general approach here? Observation that you can use an overall standard 
or uh, you know that community is broadly adapting as your basis for the domain model at least the, for the news and mail content and what do you see that point Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, in first and second line, you mentioned that uh, someone like uh, news ML is a sandy structure data, right? Why it's, it cannot be like the sandy structure? Should news not be. Sandy structure data. So now the next question to be asked is um, uh, can you, uh, is there a match? Either for the news ML document that we have, right, that you are supposed to do, and the news article uh, description as in schema.org, is the schema.org model rich enough? And um, uh, news ML was described uh, long before uh, schema.org's news article definition. The people who design uh, schema.org news article def description uh, factor into the existing of news ML as a major, um, uh, you know, uh, existing data format, metadata standard. So just so that you guys understand, news ML will, can be classified as a metadata standard. Uh, so news is a type of data, and uh, news ML gives you a metadata standard. It is not a semantic standard, but it is a standard, nevertheless, a metadata representation standard. It allows you to represent all the metadata because this is a tag and a value. So they have defined a fixed set of tags. But still it is a structured, right? Yes, it is structured. So you look at NewsML, just if you don't open the NewsML, uh, you know. So if you study this, right, and you go down further. So there is a clear model here, and the clear, you know, uh, you know, uh, different uh, uh, top, you know, topics that are identified here. The type is string, but uh, sent from. Right. So there is a meaning to it, right? There will be other things like, uh, you know, what is a formal name, uh, and, and so on. So there is more meaning, huh? Topics. Topics. Yeah. Topics would be the one of the most important one, right? Now take an example of topic. Uh, and uh, practically all news ML content would have a topic described, right? And the important thing to recognize is that when the news ML was implemented, there weren't automatic uh, topic extraction algorithms to populate the news ML document. So your story, which is in text, a journalist sitting in Syria writes up a story. That story will be typically just text and some photographs. Then it comes to the AP News Bureau. Suppose AP News Bureau is a syndicator, is the is the uh, you know, AP News, PTI service, Reuters news service. These are the major news services. They are the ones who get this kind of raw data and they make up news ML. Right? So they put in news ML um, uh, 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 envelope and embed into that the content, the whole story will be there too. But they may put all the other things also, right? There will be a human there. And that human may often put what the topic is from a list of topics that they have. There is a wonderful article, I don't know if anybody saw that, a wonderful uh, uh, a video, I, I might have shared in our community page of the uh, uh, an editor at, or a senior person at uh, New York Times. <coughs> Did anybody watch that video? So, so uh, there is this uh, video, uh, and um, the um, person at news uh, uh, at uh, uh, at New York Times discusses uh, how they are well prepared to leverage linked opening. So first of all, New York Times 
was among the first media company that started to uh, artifice all their data. So they, were, they started to annotate all their data in RDF and push it out. So all of the RDF uh, for all the news, uh, tag, uh, you know, for New York Times content is going into link open data. And it's searchable, and usable. After that, BBC also started doing that. So this is a very important thing. One interesting thing that uh, this guy talked about was that from for for at least 50 years, if not longer, they have been annotating their data. Earlier, they were not pushing out like to link open data, but they have been annotating it, and they have had that. And so, once they annotate it, they can have internal search. I remember visiting uh, CNN in uh, you know Atlanta. Their head office in Atlanta was trying to sell our product from Tali and such. And uh, they basically said, "Here's the problem: they have this years worth of content. And primarily, you know, being a TV-centric company, website came later on. News broadcaster, much of the content uh, has basically is video, along with." transcripts and such. And they have big rooms of these things with all those, you know, shells and all the content. And they earlier did not even have a catalog. Now they have some basic, they had, when I visited them, and I'm talking about year 2000 and, uh, 2000 or 2001, uh, they uh, just were developing a catalog, full catalog, so they can find what they want. Say, oh, you know, uh, suppose uh, some well-known person, let's say, died. They want to pick up uh, some footage of an interview that person had 10 years ago. How do they find? So they did not have a search engine. They did not have metadata for all the content. And what I was trying to sell is that, hey, you give us all this content and we will help you create the metadata. And you may remember in Tali uh, search engine, uh, you take a content uh, and then it will tell you what classif you know, you class you know, automatic classification. And then for that baseball, you use baseball ontology for uh, entertainment uh, movies will use movie ontology, right? That kind of stuff. So the New York Times guy said that, look, we had internal classification already there. So it was proprietary. It was just, you know, it was not like industry um, created. It was something that New York Times, uh, you know, created for internal use. But they have been consistently using for all these different years. Right? You remember I talked to you about the Srinija? She was the first ontologist for Yahoo, when Yahoo was primarily into directory, right? So she designed and kind of basically oversaw the actual, you know, saying, I will have this category and I have this category and all that stuff, right? And internally, the category has certain properties also. Well, these guys had done their own job also in New York Times. Now, for the community as such, for the news article, schema.org is doing it. But before news article, uh, uh, schema work was news article, news everyone had it in the news domain, right? Do they match? What do you think? Did they match? Did anybody look at it? Sujan, did you see? Are they match? Are other terms matching? Sanjay, did you see if the terms are matching? There are certain terms that are matching. And there are some that are not matching. News service providers like CNN, BBC. So if you look at uh, News ML, which is uh, a specific, uh, which is uh, a standard uh, defined to describe 
news articles and uh, <coughs> I, I think it focuses uh, on uh, exchanging news articles between uh, two parties. So there, there's a high possibility that news ML captures more metadata than uh, news article as in schema. But still, uh, uh, I mean, if you look at the, uh, the submission, uh, if you have uh, mapped everything into a common uh, vocabulary, uh, the power you will get is that uh, you have a common representation to uh, search news articles as well as news uh, published on the web. So there are pluses and minuses. Right. So, so just let me uh, fill in a little bit. Um, uh, the news ML was created for um, what Sanjay has said is exchange of articles. So basically, um, you have to understand the news business. So I was telling you that there is a journalist on the field, and many of the journalists now, majority of the journalists are um, freelancers. Uh, CNN and others have been laying off journalists on their own. But uh, you know, larger number of journalists will be with uh, the news services like AP and so on and so forth, and they will you know shuttle and fly wherever there is business because they don't want to keep many people on salary. Anyway, so they will create all these things and they will package in this thing. Now AP, which is a syndic you know which is a news service, is also in the syndication business, meaning it will collect data from many sources and. Uh, allow other website, uh, other consumers of news to license it. License for display on their web page, license for using it in their print in the newspaper, local newspaper, and whatever. Right? So the idea is that NewsML is tagged such a way that there is an ease of taking that content and make, make it usable for the consumers of the news, for the, for the actual portals and newspapers and this kind of thing, not the end consumers. So one of the important things you see, you'll see there's a tag on rights, right? And there are, uh, you know, there'll be tags uh, that, are, that have nothing to do with uh, what actually the article is about. So this is content independent metadata, if you may remember the kind of category that I described earlier, right? And so, you're going to, um, um, uh, uh, you know, so, so there will be a lot of other things. And the news articles in the schema.org is not necessarily made for all the um, syndication and, enter, you know, plumbing of the uh, news flow, right? Another, by the way, interesting thing here is that measure the content, uh, uh, majority of editorial content on the web, particularly commercial content on the web. Like the news is mostly almost all commercial content, right? Somebody creates content, wants to be paid. That guy who goes, freelancer who goes to Syria wants to be paid for the story he or she wrote. Uh, there is a writer and there is a photographer. Typically they go in the team. And both of them want to be paid and separately by the way. And so, 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 and, and they, you know, they, they put up their story and then, you know, this uh, uh, syndicators pick it up. And they, they negotiate the price or there is a certain, you know, uh, agreement in place. And they will do exclusive, so it will only, if you want that story, you have to license it from AP, as an example. So that's how it works, okay? Then, that story shows up on Yahoo News. Now, in this case, what happens is that either Yahoo News has to subscribe to the content from AP News, or uh, Yahoo News and AP News have to be, uh, AP has to have agreement, of monetization saying that if a consumer display the uh, news and Yahoo, then Yahoo will have right to uh, uh, put advertisement and the monetization of that will be shared with AP News 70-30, something along that line. 70 is kept by the website you know, portal owner who can, owns the consumer. Consumer comes to that. Actual vendetta happens when somebody consumes your advertisement. Right? So that money is then going to be uh, split. And it actually, there are, it's more complicated than what I'm describing to you. But generally speaking, this is how it is. So the, uh, you know, the, the journalist doesn't want to be paid. You know, they just want to pay, uh, you know, get some, pay something and, 
been done with it in the further work. Then uh, AP News wants to takes the risk of hey nobody buys that content license the content from that they you know cover the money but you know and then uh, the others uh, uh, you know use it but when they use, when they license it uh, and and this way somebody makes money that money is collected and then split so you can call it subscription fee or warranty or whatever that is um, so this thing uh, news ML has certain additional thing that are meant for that and there are some you know I don't know whether this is a complete news ML or there's more to that. And there are versions of that. I forgot now. When I when we did this, uh, we had studied in lot, lot, lot detail. In fact, I went to an organization that designed this thing on New York Wall Street. Well, not Wall Street, next Wall Street. Anyway. So uh, CBS News, that's the place I also visited in those days. All right. So coming back to now, we are doing obviously this, uh, I think, but to enhance your understanding. Uh, let's come back to the submission here. Alright, uh, anybody wants to say anything more about the, yes? So, what the news ML document actually meant is that, uh, that is the schema that should be used to represent news articles. Right? Yes. So if I want to design a search engine and if the user uh, search, search for like news ML schema, I should retrieve this document. Should you should I never search for news ML schema. You should will search for, um, uh, well there are two kinds of user. If the user is, um, Let's say a, a industry, you know, professional. Then they may want, to, and they are kind of. So suppose you are a um, Dayton uh, TV station, and you are trying to decide what, um, uh, uh, you know, what should you include, what international story you should include in today's evening newscast. So you'll be sitting right roughly at one o'clock, uh, working very hard to think about what will come up in the five o'clock news. I think. Uh, and um, so they, they have a professional search engine. In fact, that search engine, one of the example search engine was made by my partner. So when I did Tali, my uh, you know, co-founder was Ajit Chopra, uh, uh, Ajay Chopra. Ajay Chopra was uh, CEO and founder of uh, Pinnacle Systems. Uh, Pinnacle System was purchased by, I forget the company. But um, Pinnacle had, for example, a professional um, uh, you know, video editing system from which you can search for the available news content. So they, that particular uh, customized search engine would be very much under, would very much know the, uh, the, the format of news ML uh, uh, thing and exploit it. But when a consumer goes on Yahoo News and search for something, at that point the value of all of the tags are, is minimal of the news ML. Only the main content and the title and all those things that matter, the kind of visual thing that you see in the news, that is all that matter, right? Typically, nobody searches for all the articles from Syria that were uh, you know, syndicated by AP News. Nobody does that on Yahoo News. On that one, they may say, I have preferred licensing agreement from uh, AP and not Reuters. I'll pay Reuters uh, one and a half times what I'll pay AP. If the same service is available by both, from both, I will take this one. There this kind of stuff. So uh, I hope I answered part of your question. No, let let me let me put it this way. Like, let's say if I'm a programmer and if I'm looking for news ML schema, should I retrieve all the documents which are using this news ML schema? If you are a programmer and retrieving, so so we are programming working for what? What kind of application are you developing? Let's say I'm working on XML schemas and I want to annotate one, like use this news ML schema in one of the articles in my application. Well, if you have if you have a, an original content and you want that content to be made available through this kind of uh, background in, in infrastructure where articles are created, shared, and all that, then you would use NewsML. So there'll be authoring tool that will allow an editor to uh, do NewsML, and some of the things will be uh, done um, uh, uh, semi-automatically also. So, for example, we I don't know if you remember uh, we uh, I had shown. Um, So um,
So if you look at um, You see, there are all this metadata. So this can be, for, for example, all the news email tags, for example, if it was news content as an example. And then what happens is that, suppose uh, uh, the content, let's assume that this content was not all formatted like in this BBC news page. But let's assume that this is the original content, right? Then you can see here, all the different tags, the, so you can assume this to be news uh, content, uh, sorry, tags, and uh, if you use a technology like what we are described here in Extraction Engine, then some of them may be populated. For example, if you have a location, then it may be automatically populated for you. And if you are, if you are, uh, you know, Belgrade, you go, uh, this is obviously in the old content, right? Uh, there is no longer Yugoslavia. Uh, Yugoslavia, Europe would be automatically added for you. Right? Yeah. And so this is how this is an example of authoring, and that may have semi-automatic uh, uh, support for that. Yes. I think his question was uh, all of. I mean, some of us have approached the news ML um, document as uh, you know. How would you take semantics out of documents which are annotated in news ML uh, markup? And some of us have interpreted it as somebody is firing a query whose response is that document. Yeah. That so because this is, the, this is the document that we have in the corpus. We don't have a document which is annotated using news right? No, you do. No. No. No, no. For the first, uh, the, the yeah. first part, the first question is, um, if you um, had an article, uh, described in news ML, right? If the article was uh, in this format. This is not an example article. This is the format of the article. No, you no. just gave yeah, the URL. Yes. yes. You just gave the URL. We are supposed to index so this particular this document. Not document. This particular document. Not document. Not document. document. Not document. Using this document. Different. So, so you just gave the URL, URL and we analyzed yes. the document. So it's yes. just a tag. So we. So we just URL took that yes. document as yes. not the story. Some of us have done it that way, and yes. some of us yes. have. Yes. Some of us has it. I guess, I guess uh, we'll have to then allow for both the interpretation. Uh, 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 my intention certainly was, uh, see, I made it so short and sweet, and yet, <laughs> <laughs> but my intention was that you have uh, a news ML uh, annotated document, and here is a schema for news ML. No, right? Okay. How will you process the given example of data documents? Mm -hmm. So these three, right? Yeah. Uh, it's useful. It's useful to your semantic search engine, no matter which way you look. Yeah, it is useful either way, and uh, that's why I also uh, I think one thing I did right was to document major assumptions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to the extent that you're willing to document assumptions, you are okay, right? So you have right to. Uh, no, you know. I think uh, so. Basically, when I uh, read this, uh, when I look at these three documents you've given me. You can ask uh, how I interpret that piece. First one is kind of semi-structured. Second one is totally unstructured. Yeah. Third one is for multimedia. And that, that is what you expect. Correct. Yeah. I simply so had that as an intention, and I would like to, uh, you know your um, uh, answer to reflect the fact that you have recognized that, and uh, there are uh, more things to be done. So when it is uh, semi-structured with um, part data annotated, you are going to be able to use it. So. As you are saying in the first uh, submission here for by this person, um, yes, yes, you has noted that uh, there is a uh, possible, you know, uh, there's a schema article, and I may be able to do, you know, mapping uh, and reuse something. Then that is very uh, appropriate strategy because you are uh, exploiting the annotations that's already there or semi-structuredness that is already there. And beyond that, um, there are many other aspects of structuring that will come about. We'll discuss. Uh, that uh, you may exploit to me. So I hope that some of you will notice how you will exploit or not. Okay. So uh, in in this uh, for this particular um, um, uh, you know a part here, the first part, news ML. Is there any uh, other comment you want to make? Because it continues on after that with um, some techniques here. Use of 
tags itself to extract more information is, is pretty interesting, like he mentioned, associated with. So going into that and getting articles that would be associated with a given topic is a, is a good thing. Now, clearly, this person is uh, a little bit more knowledgeable. Um, uh, uh, so uh, raise your hand if you know Alchemy API. One, two, three, four, five. Only five of you know that, right? So, um, uh, 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 although uh, my expectation for mature student would be to have Googled and uh, uh, or, you know search for that and find out because you're supposed to understand this um, uh, answer, right? So, to, how did you understand this answer if you did not know what it was? If you want to do a good job, you should go and uh, look it up, right? What do you say? You obviously know it's a toolkit. I mean, oh, you, know, you know Archive no, API? <coughs> so if you look at it and you see the content you're using, it, it's a toolkit to use tags. So you, mm -hmm. don't, you don't have to necessarily go There's more it. than that, no. There's more than that. Just, just to if you just uh, um, uh, uh, go on with the partial understanding that this is some toolkit, that's not as good as you can do compared to actually knowing what Archive API is. There is something more to it. All right, tell me somebody who has read it, uh, uh, Alchemy API. What is Alchemy API and what is this trying to say? I will use a commercially available entity support tool such as Alchemy API. Sorry. But uh, suppose you get a noun, proper noun from them. How do you know what it is? Stanford Python is not using the background knowledge, rather it's using, but this is not a free program. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to eat at the end of the day.
So here is a, uh, oops, why is, hmm. memory is memory not memory memory. So. So here is a, uh, a system that we developed in uh, a long time ago. This was when Cori was still a undergraduate student, okay? And here, um, let me show you something. So here we are getting uh, this data here. Look at this page. Very interesting, okay? Just remember this, this is just remember the format of the page. Look at this page and look at this page here, right? So here it talks about all kinds of uh, um, uh, problems that occur in all kinds of incidences, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, terrorist group in the Middle East, for example. So we are taking all that data, <coughs> these are the sources of knowledge, and from that we create the ontology. This is the ontology that is <coughs> created from all these multiple sources of data. In this case, the ontology was created for uh, terrorism. And when we created ontology for terrorism, and we, this was after 9-11. So it is, I think, 2000, 2002 that we created. And we put it on the web, and I, we got a you know, call from State Department to take it down. <laughs> they are very sensitive, sensitive those days, because they were sure, you know, if we could find out all this knowledge about terrorism, they didn't want to be able to. Anyway. So um, you can see here, relationship, person, member of organization. And that is extracted from highly heterogeneous sources. So we have these kind of tools in those days. I'm fairly proud of you, as you can say. Now, this knowledge base is created, and the knowledge base uh, you know, kind of looked like, uh, let's see if I can even get, uh, show you. So this is how, you know, a visualization of knowledge is, okay? This is all these entities in this look here. Now, so that is this part here, see? I'm getting data from many places. Now, this is, look at the content. <coughs> and look at the notation, right? You can compare. Now again, this is pretty old slide. They compare with the alchemy or whatever you want to compare with. There are three kinds of notation here. There are three colors. One is gray. The gray is um, a domain independent kind of thing. Date is a domain independent thing. So gray would be, uh, is domain independent. Um, green is uh, something that we understand is to be meaningful or important, interesting, but we don't, it's not semantic, it is lexical. We understand area of operation is something interesting. Right? We understand, uh, uh, in this case, so happened that we did not understand Gulf state in a semantic way, but we understand Gulf state is a meaningful stuff. But here, Gaza Strip, or West Bank, or Israel, or you know all this kind of stuff, that Islamic Republic uh, resistance movement, these we understood to be entities of very specific type. In the ontology, we have the variety of types, and different types of uh, terrorist organism, and what they do, and where are they based, Everything that we have in ontology, this, if you click on that, will you know, take you the, this is annotated with concept in ontology, and with along that comes all the understanding of the concept, right? And see, this is the internal representation of annotated data. <coughs> and now, here we are querying, graphically doing the query. Tell me all the, uh, uh, give me all the news items um, that discuss terrorism in Middle East. And look what our system does. So graphically, the query is correct, so you don't have to type language, and it comes up with the color-coded rank list of documents. Uh, green meaning uh, a highly uh, 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 you know, relevant, and red meaning not relevant. 
So I'm opening a document here. This document was being highly relevant. And you can see that it talks about a um, whole bunch of stuff, Ansar al-Islam and um, Abu, uh, you know, uh, uh, Zakawi and all that kind of stuff, right? And you can clearly see that this is a Middle East terrorism related document. And uh, <coughs> uh, the reason it is that this is, a, this is actually, uh, I don't I didn't know any other, but this might be the first relationship-based search engine. This concept is still new. Um, but what, what we do here is that the uh, query terms are here and metadata terms from documents are here. And we find the links, path. And if the path is very short and direct, that means it is closely related. If path is uh, long wielded, indirect, that means less related. So look at this example, of course, it shows and explains why this document is very related. Look at this one. This document next is less related. This is about uh, you know Philippines, Abu Sayyaf's group, right? What, the reason it comes up somewhat related is because while this particular document is not about terrorism in Middle East, other uh, ontology has a knowledge that Abu Sayyaf cooperates with uh, terrorists in Middle East. So I'm using ontological knowledge to find connections to say there is a, an indirect relationship. Not in this document, but indirectly. <coughs> so you can see the link, which is slightly longer. And you can see the path kind of stuff, right? And here is a document that some of you guys know more about. Prabhakaran and um, the Sri Lankan group and all that. LTTE. Here, it, 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 it says it is not very related to Middle East terrorism. It, it knows, it says that it is terrorism, but there is no connection to Middle East terrorism. Right? So, so you can see a long path connection, indirect path with the connection being made in the ontology. <coughs> anyway, so uh, coming back to, um, uh, and you can see, yeah, so this, this kind of stuff, right? One question here, yeah. like how we are creating ontology out of this? Because as you know, we don't know about all these relationships, or can't we? We can't make our ontology right uh, using these terrorism or like what? No, we did, right? I mean, I showed you the ontology itself. So it, it's a human effort again, like your automatic. Um. Uh, so um. Let me show you this thing. So um, now again, uh, 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 well, let's go back to so this document discusses the ontology creation process in detail. Okay, but the point here is the we have different sources. <coughs> I showed you different kinds of documents. Remember table and other things I showed you. So they are different sources. They are knowledge extractors. They create that. These knowledge extractors are written by are created by human using tools. So they're not totally hand coded, but they are rejects kind of system. So that, how did they look like? Let me show you this. I have some snapshots here. So this was, yeah, you see, see here, this slide says ontology creation and maintenance process. So here, this is the schema of the ontology. And then we, as part of this toolkit, we have ability to define the crawling. Each of the sites I showed you have different formats and different site structure. So the crawling rules, see there are different kinds, of, there is a ex crawler and extractor. The two, the two different terms that are used. So what when you kind of look at a website, there are many pages. Many websites are created by uh, tools and they have style sheets. Right? So uh, all the news content of one kind would be in one format. Another uh, content of other kind would be another content. <coughs> For example, the Yahoo picture news follows different format. The, the, we have the, the third link I have in the assignment, right? With the Yahoo picture. That format is very different than the uh, text news related pages, right? Okay, 
So first is the crawler that no size structure, and each cra crawler allows takes you to each type of content. Within that, it gives you each of the different pages. For each of the different pages, then you need to write an extractor that says the pages the structure. And you know, so suppose that page is an embedded structure. So that suppose that page was actually created from New Zealand. Then my um, uh, extractor would know all those tags, and it will allow me to map those tag values onto the onto this particular schema. So I would be using, um, you know, direct, you know, a regular expression, you know, regular expression. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that that will take me to a particular part of the page, uh, or allow me to kind of traverse, you know, syntactically the page. Pick a particular value and then allow it to define this value. If you find here, map it to the, this data item here. So this is instance, right? That would be an instance, right? What you have to go to every instances, yeah. This is so. What is ontology? Ontology has a schema and knowledge base. Ontology is description and instance base, or what we call as a populated ontology. In other word, meaning not just the model. So schema dot, uh, you know, schema dot our article gives you all the you know uh, properties you have but then for a particular article you'll have actual instances right mm -hmm. the same thing occurs here you have your schema for ontology and the instances suppose you have schema a thing called um, um, uh, 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 a public stock and a uh, 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 you know stock traded on nasdaq so when i go on nasdaq website and pick up a stock Right, and I find that Apple A A P L, and then I will be mapping that to an instance of a technology company publicly traded on Nasdaq in my schema. <coughs> right, that's how you do. There's a any way like to update a schema also, like semantic, right? When we get to semantic, right? So there's a possibility we can uh, like sch schema changes also come, right? So there's any way like we recognize some kind of uh, new schema. For the ontology and update the schema in our existing ontology. Are you talking about change of the schema uh, that is in the knowledge base? Dynamically. Okay. So again, this is a human effort required to change it. Right? The dynamic schema or, or, or schema evolution itself, <coughs> whether it is ontology schema or any other schema, is a, a problem in itself and it's a, a challenging problem. And um, uh, there are a number of issues you have to worry about. So certain technologies, let's say relational database, changing schema is a pretty difficult problem. Yes. A, and this problem uh, described as database transformation. So what you have to do is you have to change the schema uh, manually, and then you write all kinds of script to change the data according to that schema into the new schema you have. And that will be called database transformation. On the other hand, you might have schema-less kind of uh, technologies. In RDF, <coughs> you can dynamically change, you can change the schema without having to change the whole knowledge base. In NoSQL, again, you can do that too, right? So there are certain reasons, uh, in, in particularly a uh, lot more dynamic uh, situations, why these kind of new technology, these kind of alternative technologies would be much better than using relational database technology. In the modern world, uh, you know, let's assume that we are using symmetric web technologies. Then uh, the challenges of uh, evolved schema evolution or in, in adaptation is less problematic than traditional database work. It's not trivial, so never is. Ontology learning is actually even even coming out with the schema itself. Right? Part, you know, the basic ontology learning is saying, what are the concepts in this domain? But mostly what's the relationship? Yes, uh, you know, con concepts and how they are related, yes. So uh, a long time ago, we had a project called Onto, uh, Texamine. It goes to corpus and try to develop a, um, uh, uh, you know, a model the this is a you know Topher's first work in fact the Kartik Ramakrishna uh, uh, was a text of minor project no not Topher I think no it was Vipur Kashyap and my first PhD student ever and Kartik Ramakrishna they did work on uh, text of <coughs> that general 
So how things have evolved, not necessarily in a direct way, but you know, is what you call, what you see as Brazil now, what you talk about. And again, it also relates, depends on what kind of ontology you're talking about. Are we talking about ontology in the former language and in our, or are we talking about a domain model as in a uh, user? Very different, right? Okay, so enough of this diversion. I hope you got some. So we are talking about um, Alchemy API. So what Alchemy API is, uh, you know, and I showed you example of similar thing. Alchemy API uh, is, um, uh, uh, Alan was showing you has, uh, you know, see these are relationships they have. What are these colors? I don't know. But you can see there's one, uh, uh, Fedus was given the opportunity to bank down. Now, is it interesting to know? This is not an ent entity, right? Uh, or in a traditional sense. So they are doing different things. Some people will limit themselves to only things where this thing related to this, where this also is subject and predicate object, that this also is an entity of his, you know. Versus here, they are also putting the phrase. Why? Because this extraction is primarily <coughs> NLP based extraction. And that they still feel that it is useful to uh, have the relationship identified between one entity and anything else. And, and that is, I think there is a value to it. It depends. You cannot do formal reasoning on that. You can't do this connected to this to this, this connected to this. That, that now you can't do, create path kind of computations. A, that which you would create if I had subject, predicate, object where both of these were defined types of entities or concepts in the ontology. Right? So I can't do RDF reasoning here. Well, so in the in the kind of in, in the thing that we did, you saw the path, right? In the inside the thread demo that I showed you, you saw the path that was doing reasoning, doing path computations. There are a whole series of papers uh, in, in the 2003 to five time frame in our library that you can find that discusses how you do this, uh, what we did. There. So the point here is now that uh, coming back to the assignment, uh, uh, the uh, author talks about Alchemy API. And um, uh, he says that when querying for a news item, I will try to identify the entities in search query using Alchemy API, the entities, right? So you saw previously the entities there. And you can also identify some of the uh, kind of queries that you can ask for that. Like, you know, news item between this and that and so on and so forth, right? So the benefits of that. Okay. Anything on that? Otherwise, let's go to TechCrunch and discuss that. So how is this different? And what changes, first of all, and then what can you do with it? And how well this, uh, you know, response is? So what is the likelihood, somebody else comments, what is the likelihood that uh, what this person described um, uh, can be done? Telsa Motor CEO and founder Elon Musk definitely isn't the best guy to try to pull a fast one on. And then he says, would give me the triple Telsa Motor CEO Elon Musk. When can you do that and how well you can do that? Is, um, uh, the concept of uh, CEO is that in your ontology? Is that in your schema? How do you limit to what uh, property types you are interested in, and how do you identify those property types? I uh, one possibility is that I think Alchemy is pretty capable of identifying this particular thing by itself, right? 
Any question? Any any concerns there? Do you understand what I'm saying here? Fundamentally, uh, that thing is possible to get, right, using our KVM API. You saw the relations there, right? So let's assume that the Venus saw that indeed uh, you can find it. <laughs> you should read the you know the paper on complex entity and relationship extraction that uh, you know can't take that for example. Yeah. There is one application in well find that given two entities and reduce the relation between them. No, but that would be only if it is in DBP diagram. Yeah, no, you can add uh, some knowledge. Uh, if it does not extract from text. No. Just you need to give them, give it entities and it will give them. For example, after identifying entities. Oh. Yeah. It, it will, it will look, look up the knowledge base and yeah. find it there, right? Find, yeah. so that's that's much simpler than uh, text, uh, you know, ex extraction triple from text. Okay, more comments on this? What do you want to do? Whereby criminals have uh, posted a, a, a photograph or something, 
I think McAfee's uh, CEO is one of the very good examples, right? So uh, he posted some photograph and um, he, uh, he forgot uh, or did not recognize that the cell phone had already uh, uh, encoded GPS location. So then the poor law enforcement found out where in Belize he was uh, hiding. Right? So this is so the what you for behind each audio or video, uh, depending on the tool you created, the device you created, there is a lot of metadata. In fact, if you search for it, metadata for video and uh, uh, and, and any digital media objects, audio and, and other things, you will see that there is a comprehensive work. So. Um, in the um, uh, uh, does anybody know of the work on video annotation standards? And what are they called? Uh, there is, a, uh, I think, they go with there is a. Um, They, they go with the two seven twenty one. What is that? Frame uh? No, no, no. There is a. I used to deal with this thing. Excuse me, my video. Um, crunch base section at the bottom of the page. Did any of you guys notice that or, or write about that in your submissions? Um, it looks like if you if it has the crunch base section for, I don't know, one of the mentioned entities, Tesla Motors, for example, you could potentially follow this link and you see that the information on this page is more structured. It doesn't all just occur in free text and these are, uh, these are human created or at least assertions here. We have some job titles here, so there's a people section, and that can very easily be mapped, especially compared to extracting, you know, CEO Alchemy API. I couldn't even pull that uh, Elon was the uh, co-founder co and CEO. But this would make it a lot easier to do that. So the thing is, <coughs> it didn't occur on that page, so I don't know if that was kind of cheating on this assignment, because we were only supposed to explore those three documents, but if you follow the link from there, knowing something like Crunchbase, of course this type of thing would require uh, manual extractors. I think that, you know, the company creating the semantic search engine would have to use some discretion on uh, which, which sites like Crunchbase does it merit developing a, a custom extractor for that, and if so, So you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, Google for a, a video, uh, you know, uh, a content called web-based personalization and management of interactive video. And that will discuss an example of uh, quite a few uh, the semantic sensor web. Yeah. 
So, but anyway, these are the, uh, you know, um, kind of, uh, give you some, some basic background on the kind of um, annotations that can be there if one wanted to really have that. Uh, not, um, um, okay, let's come back to the thing, right? Actually, wasn't sure on the submission if it was if it was using TFIDF only as a backup or if it was using it in combination with spotted entities. And for example, uh, <coughs> like the entities would be weighted higher than the others. If base uh, okay, pl TFIDF plus special weighting for known entities. Um, why? Why might that be? It's like exist knowledge base nowhere else. So you no, it could like exist anywhere. Just if it's if it's in the knowledge base. Just so like why would you want to boost it higher in the search results? Because then you guys we are mostly looking for entities when we are searching things. Other than just some True. That's that's looking at that's looking at context, and that can that can really change things. Uh, if you search for yes, apple, but if you have another word and you give it some context, the search engine could decide if it's the fruit or uh, car or the uh, electronics. Um, I think we're going to.
take a break because um, it's you know um, five o'clock and uh, uh, we need to uh, you know give you also the ability to wrap up in the time. So a um, couple of comments. So uh, I you can notice that about half of you were acting and about half of you were not very acting. I like everybody to uh, you know participate. The next time I anticipate those who are quieter. Let's deal with that. It's a great, um, um, uh, uh, I think, uh, skill, even if it's not a most technical thing that uh, is it's not my primary goal, <coughs> I do know that it comes very useful for you eventually in your real world and when you're in company, you need to know how to speak up and then so get your ideas through. And I think all of you are capable of doing that even if you're quiet, so I want to see that. Next time, those who are quiet, I'll put them bit more on the spot and ask them to participate, right? Um, and um, I hope uh, you're kind of getting a sense of what we are trying to do, right? And um, um, the purpose here is not just evaluating uh, the purpose is that I think you all need to be participating, you, know, you need to be participating in investigation and uh, in, on your own. So, just look at an example of Alchemy API. I, when you read a material, um, just guessing what you <coughs> think it is is not good enough. You need to know if you're really going to get, uh, be able to say, comment on it or interpret it. So think about uh, you working in a company and you are discussing something, you know, your document that you're discussing, the computer's product or your proposal that your colleague has written. Well, if you're going to do a good job in your red teaming, let's say, uh, you would be, you know, you know, expected to actually do the uh, research so that um, um, uh, you can very meaningfully make the right judgment about it, and not just. You know, so, so these are the kind of things I want to do. Um, for those of you who are doing research, this is a skill you need to have because when you write, read the papers, and you know, before you even write your, uh, you know, your own papers. Well, you, what you're reading is just not reading that paper. You're reading, making sure all the concepts behind the paper is clear to you, and follow up their references and other things, right? And look them up. So that skill is something you need to develop if it's not already there. Right? Hope you enjoyed. We'll continue. Karin, um, before you came, I had some instructions. So uh, what we are doing is that you're going to uh, yourself create your own document for each, uh, put down your own ID on the top, and then for each of the submissions that we're discussing, you're going to give a grade A to F. And uh, you, know, you need to have reasonable distribution, not everything can be A or not everything can be F. It doesn't mean that it has to be equally distribution. Right? So that would be one of the things to so, 